morning. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. My name is Joe Mansueto. I'm with Godlin. For the next 30 minutes or so, we're going to be talking about business risk and business security requirements. In this session, we're going to take a look at what's available within Sightline version 9, as well as uh, what you can do with some small personalization with DataView and other built-in Sightline tools to really get a handle on who has access to what. We'll then take a look at another uh, Infor uh, solution called Approva. Our presenters today are Tom Passy and Warren Smith. Tom has been with Infor since 2009. Tom's uh, an Infor product director managing Infor Approva risk and compliance, Infor master data management, and enterprise search. With over 20 years experience in enterprise systems, Tom has held senior positions in software design, engineering, consulting, pre-sales, marketing, and product management, enabling customer success through technology innovation. Warren has been with Godland and previously in for for nine years and has over 25 years of, of uh, uh, senior experience in manufacturing. Uh, Warren has published many articles and papers offering deep insight into manufacturing operations as well as the utilization of technology which companies can adopt to better run their business. Um, folks, as we go through today's presentation, we do invite you to send us your questions related to what you are seeing from the guys. Uh, you can do that by sending your questions through the GoToMeeting chat panel and we will take time to read those off at the end uh, as we have a, a Q&A session right after the presentation. With that, I'd like to turn things over to Warren Smith. Well, thank you, Joe, and uh, good morning, everyone. So, well, we have quite a few folks on, uh, on uh, this morning. This is a, uh, a very hot topic that has become really even uh, more critical as uh, information is becoming much more uh, key to all of our businesses. And, uh, you know, it, it's something that uh, it's near and dear apparently to your heart because you're on this uh, call today and listening, and uh, we're going to give you some information as we move forward here. So uh, with that, you know, let's just take a look at, uh, uh, you know, a quick agenda of what we're looking at is we're going to take a look at some of the things that we're facing today in the industries, you know, as manufacturers, as uh, producers of product. Uh, as keepers and having that responsibility for the intellectual property of your organization, you're going to be facing a number of challenges, and these challenges are not going to get any simpler. They're not going to get any easier. So we're uh, really needing to be able to have the tools at your fingertips uh, and in your portfolio, I should say, in order to maintain uh, security. We're going to take a look at uh, what's available in Sightline today. We're going to be specifically talking about uh, Sightline version 90020 and uh, also known as Cloud Suite and uh, what's available in security management for Cloud Suite. I'm going to then take a look and walk you through a couple of personalizations that uh, we have done here at Gotham. And uh, matter of fact, if you're interested uh, at the conclusion of this meeting, we can uh, probably even uh, send out some of those, uh, the details on how we did that. But relatively simple personalizations that make the security management a lot easier. What we're going to do then is uh, my colleague Tom, uh, who works for Infor, is going to take you uh, through the product called Approva. And Approva is really a state-of-the-art solution for security and uh, compliance management. And he's going to take you, walk you through that. And we'll wrap this up with some discussions. So let's take a look at, you know, where are we at today? <clears throat> you know, it, 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 you don't have to turn the, open the newspaper or turn on the news uh, typically at night without hearing something going on about intellectual property being breached, security, whether that be employee data, whether that be credit card data. Uh, heck, even the IRS has been breached uh, with, with information here. So, you know, we're hearing this, we're continuing it to uh, uh, increase uh, at, at really almost exponential rates at this point. And if you take a look at this, you know, ask yourselves the question, are you at risk? Do you have a product that someone else might value if they were able to get information that's contained within your organization? Uh, you know, the fact is that are you willing also to take that responsibility of signing off to your stakeholders, whether that be a public company and your stockholders and the SEC, or whether that be a private company and the owners of that business? Are you willing to say, yes, sir, my business is secure, my systems are secure? So let's take a look at how we can start taking a look at this. Things that we've been hearing over time, you know, whether it be 
uh, inventory missing, and uh, I can tell you stories when I was in manufacturing. Uh, matter of fact, the uh, story goes back, uh, I, I had a manufacturing plant in Chicago, and we all know Chicago kind of gets a bad rap for uh, you know crime of the, in the past and such, but this goes back into the, uh, the mid-1980s. And uh, we actually had employees that uh, were stealing copper, of all things. And, uh, you know, the value of it was high. And uh, believe it or not, they were throwing it out of a seven-story window. So, uh, you know, you find that people will go to all lengths to uh, find a way if they really want to. Uh, you know, being able to monitor and put into places uh, or put into uh, a methodology to monitor how you're controlling your, your systems. Being able to take a look and say, you know, well, if, an, a, if a theft was to go into uh, take place, is can I check it? Can I find that, uh, you know, that it has happened? We're finding also that majority of the, of the controls today are still manual. You know, it's still the, quote, security guard mentality of being able to take a look at this. So many companies haven't applied a, a systematic approach to this. And, you know, we all get scared of audits. Everyone hates when the auditors come in. But the fact is, auditors are really doing us a favor. Because what they're going to do is they're going to keep us out of trouble. And they're going to make sure that we have those controls in place ahead of time before it's, it's too late. Now, why is it? Why is this risk increasing? As I said, it's increasing, I believe, exponentially. Well, the fact is that more and more critical data is stored, you know, and it's all stored in one place. Typically, uh, the good thing is it is stored in one place, so we can put some controls in place and uh, you know get away from those Excel spreadsheets that uh, who knows can end up on a memory stick. And uh, you know, just to give you an example here, I have I'm sitting here with a memory stick that's 128 gigabytes. And it is a small memory stick, about one and a half inches by maybe three quarters of an inch. And do you realize that at 128 gig, most of us could put our entire business system on that memory stick and walk out the door with it. And it could be in our pocket. So really some huge uh, issues there. We're also finding out that uh, due to increased employee turnover, and I say no more lifers, uh, you know, in, in years past, back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, you had employees that were fiercely loyal to the organization. They were there forever. You knew their families and such like that. So the chances, you know, it was more of a family approach. But now we're starting to find out that we've got employees that we're bringing in. There might be specialists in an area. But you know, have we done the background checks? Have we found out everything we need to know about them? And how well are they? You know, could they uh, could they turn on us here? We've got the professional hackers out there, and everything from unfriendly country uh, countries to uh, those in the employ of our competitors that are out there. And these professionals truly are uh, professional hackers. They they have the tools. They have the knowledge. We've got network systems that are, are you're providing access anywhere, whether you're sitting in the airport with your iPhone or, or iPad, uh, working over perhaps networks that are maybe not secure. So the information is moving around the world, and uh, you may not even know where it's moving at this point. And the fact is that because business has become much more complex, we're having to involve many more people in the decision-making processes and, and the solution process. So we've got this ability to, uh, you know, collaborate. But with that, we have many more places of uh, where that information can go and people that are involved in the in the picture. And uh, we have to make sure that we have control over all of those people. So what are some of the top control challenges that we face? Well, it might be things like segregation of duties, making sure that different people are involved in every process, which uh, to make sure that they all have a check and balance making sure that we're not duplicating information, or making sure that employees are properly being reimbursed, making sure that people are going through the proper requisition process for purchases, various other fraud prevention methodologies, uh, overpayments, approvals, just down to things like writing checks. And uh, you know, with checks, at least there was a piece of paper that you were looking at here that uh, you had some traceability. But perhaps you're using uh, electronic funds transfer, where it's just a stream of bits and bytes uh, moving down a wire. We've got the various regulatory issues. And the SEC is constantly introducing new uh, issues or new uh, requirements and various other standards violations. So these are kind of the things that we're looking at here we're going to try to address. Now, for those of us on the call here in the manufacturing industry, 
this, you know, this is definitely near and dear to our heart because many of these fraud, much of this fraud is attacking our raw manufacturing processes here. Some of the things like uh, $200,000 is the average uh, loss per firm. And you start thinking about that might be maybe two, three, four percent of your sales, maybe five percent, who knows, maybe even 10 percent of your sales. That is your profit that is going away in order to, uh, to manage fraud. So very, very important things here that are going into play. Well, typically we have some type of watershed event that's going to affect us here because quite honestly, you know, we're typically heads down, the economy's good right now, we're just trying to make our sales, we're trying to keep up with customer demands, we're trying to increase profits to make sure our stakeholders are happy here. And it's not until something major happens that we wake up and go, oh, we had a problem, we didn't recognize it, but we should have. What can happen? What can some of these watershed events be? Well, the fact is that if you do have a business loss, your customers are going to find out about it. They're now going to wonder, can I really trust you as a supplier? Because what can happen is, if this fraud is large enough, you might be out of business. You may not even be a supplier to them. The various business losses from a financial standpoint, we all know that. The loss of intellectual property to a competitor, and some of that is so hard to ever recover at that point. You might even have, even to escalate this, criminal charges. Things like Groups like the SEC are now starting to pursue criminal charges against folks in organizations that could have prevented fraud. And of course, you have employee issues. Perhaps it might be some sensitive data ending up uh, in the wrong hands, and your employees no longer can trust you. So this, you know, are you waiting for one of these watershed events? Or let's take some proactive approach to this. So what we're going to do is take a look uh, over the next couple minutes here of what can we do right now with Sightline and with Cloud Suite Industrial to address some top issues here. So I want to take a look first, we're going to take a look at some security, system security, whether it be authentication, authorization, and basically controlling your user access. We're going to take a look at some segregation of duties and how we've uh, built some of these uh, personalizations to uh, address segregation duties and making it a little bit easier. I'm going to touch on a little bit about manufacturing controls and the fact is Sightline uh, Cloud Suite Industrial has a number of controls that uh, can help with that. I'll take, touch on uh, financial controls, auditing, and then I'll wrap with technology before I turn it over to Tom here. So on the call today, if you're in one of these groups, most likely you're probably either in the information technology side or the finance side. Perhaps you're in, in internal audit as well, or perhaps you wear that hat. But the fact is, these are the three major areas in your business that are going to be taking a leadership role in managing security. So if you're IT, you're going to be having to provide system security. The finance folks are going to be responsible for it, and our audit folks are going to be kind of watching and seeing what's going on. So being able to address this in really a triad approach and bringing these three, three groups of folks together and working out of this is really the best way to go, go about this. So now let's start a look at, at specifically what can we do inside of Sightline. And uh, these are some new additions to uh, Sightline uh, Cloud Suite Industrial 9, uh, specifically around user security. So for example, being able to disable inactive accounts. That's been one that's been out there for quite a while. You have now that ability to turn off those inactive accounts. You don't have to delete them, but they can be set out there as inactive. We have the ability to support token-based authentication, so yet adding another layer of security on top of just the username password or Active Directory uh, security of uh, providing that token-based authentication. You can also locking a user's computer after a period of inactivity. You know, how many times do you walk through an office at lunch and you find screens up? And you know, a uh, a person that is up to no good walking up and, and uh, having access to someone's uh, terminal at this point. Being able to store the passwords with the, with the FIPS 140-2 uh, encryption standard, which me, uh, meets all the FIPS requirements, something we've added. Uh, being able to control password lifetimes. 
being able to uh, better control scripting and the security of options in the cloud. And I'm going to touch on that a little bit more even at the point of some of the integrations uh, and integration security in a few minutes here. Being able to capture that audit log here of, of information about exceptions or failure that occur during the operations. So, you know, if something does happen, to be able to go back and do a trace back and do your forensics on, on finding out what happened. And, of course, being able to track failed user login attempts. First indication, someone's trying to get in. Uh, and being able to display some custom messages when user logs in, uh, you know, just a reminder that uh, what's, that this system is not uh, open to the public, that you should not share information, etc. So ways of getting a look at that. The next big thing we want to touch on here is segregation of duties. You know, how many of you, if you take a look at your organizations, you may have someone that has the security and authorization to, for example, create a purchase order receive the purchase order, and maybe even make a payables to a vendor. Well, if you trust that person and you think, well, you know, that's great, but the fact is that because they are enabled with all of those activities, something could happen. Absolutely something can happen. So in the past, most of the time, if you were trying to manage segregation of duties, you would take an Excel spreadsheet, put all of your critical tasks down of, of, of access, may, making a matrix of that to who had access and start manually going through the Excel spreadsheet. And as a matter of fact, this Excel spreadsheet here was uh, uh, through a, uh, used for uh, an SAP implementation that uh, a friend of mine had shared with me here. So, you know, every ERP from Sightline all the way up to these huge systems with these huge companies, they've got this problem here. Now, what can we do to get away from Excel? Because Excel is not a great way to manage segregation of duties. It takes a lot of time. So this is a little bit about what you can do inside of Sightline today. Most of you should be familiar with the user, uh, user uh, uh, commissioning screen here being able to manage your users and being able to give individual user uh, access to the modules. Uh, or maybe it's down a row authorizations at that point, but be really starting to get quite granular with that. So being able to set up users with individual user, uh, user access. Now a little personalization that we did here at Godlin was to, to take that user authorization by module and create then a set of conflict roles. So for example, what is the object name that they have access to? And what are the roles that if a person had access to one, or I should say two or more of these, with a certain, for example, read update, insert, delete, edit, or execute role, would cons be considered a conflict. So being able to create this, and here, for example, I've said, well, if you have the ability to make payments on uh, create purchase order lines, create purchase order builder, and make payments, that would be a conflict role for my group transaction group called purchasing. So we basically created that as a personalization. We also then created a form uh, called user conflicts. Basically what it does is it walks the user table and takes a look at what users have conflicting roles based on the transaction group. So we'll notice here uh, on the, my first one there, uh, Amy happens to have the ability to do a draft purge and a draft posting in the AR transaction group. So that would be someone I'd want to take a look at and saying, you know, there's a potential conflict there and either can I segregate those duties, can I take one of those things away from Amy, or uh, perhaps I need to have a compensating controls transaction to make sure, or compensating control, I should say, to mitigate the reason of her having that. But the fact is, I know it. It's now visible. I didn't have to use a spreadsheet. And these are some very simple personalizations that we did right inside of Sightline to make your job easier on finding these, uh, uh, those conflicting roles. Now I want to touch on a little bit about manufacturing controls. And these are things that are just built right into Sightline today. Hopefully that uh, you know, you've taken a look at using these, but if you haven't, uh, things like engineering change notices. Uh, I find mon a number of our, our clients uh, have revisions, but they don't have a controlled revision process in engineering. So a person could go in, change a bill, change a routing, and change how the product is produced. Well, that can introduce risk. 
So what we have suggested to them is, hey, take a look at using the engineering control process because there is a formal sign-off process at that point to controlling engineering changes. You can't just change a, a bill of material or routing or a cost willy-nilly without different people getting involved. Again, manufacturing controls, you're controlling the manufacturing process, reducing the risk, reducing the chance that a product is produced incorrectly at that point. Sightline has built-in e-signatures, so being able to have under certain very critical transactions a person that actually has to sign off and when they sign off, this meets a number of additional security me uh, mechanisms here of signing off on those processes that have been done. Typically, let's say a quality process that might have gone into play here to make sure that the things are absolutely ticked intact uh, and, and topics are signed off on. We touch on some financial controls. And many of you should be uh, uh, familiar with Infor's workflow and event management. This is built in right into the product, a great tool for managing controls. Because what you can do is you can st set up, and relatively simple, and this is enabled with end user capabilities, of setting up alerts and notifications when tasks or a certain situation changes. That might be a piece of data that changes. And in our example here, uh, we have a credit limit change. Well, typically in a financial control, definitely I'd want to know if I was the controller that a customer has requested a credit limit change. And what I want to do is when they've done this, I want to perhaps suspend any activities above that credit limit from taking place, which we can do. You can put that account basically into a suspense mode until a sign-off has taken place. And if we start taking a look at using these event controls that are built into Sightline, and being able to have this workflow, this workflow can be set up and modeled to how your business is going to go through the approval process. And this might be not only for uh, controls of, of adding uh, uh, a credit limit change, it might be something like a uh, approval of a purchase order over a certain amount, it might be doing a return to a customer for let's say a credit, it could be a number of, of activities that affect the financial or business functions in your organization. This is, a this is ability built right inside of Sightline, the workflow of that management to control your business better at this point. Ultimately too is you always have the fallback of running your audit logs, seeing who did what, at what time, to what records, what did they change, a great way to, unfortunately, after the fact, but still being able to take a look at, at what happened in a situation. You know, and these are things that uh, if, uh, if it ever gets to the point where you have to go through a uh, uh, pressing charges, for example, against an employee for, for taking a criminal act, you've got the backup information here to make sure that uh, you have a case to stand on here. So audit logs, the ultimate uh, control here, uh, if everything else failed, and uh, being able to take a look at things. Now, one of the things I mentioned here as, uh, as systems become much more complex is you're going to want to branch out beyond just Sightline. Uh, being able to have, uh, perhaps it's the use of Infor's ION, uh, for data integration. There's a number of security capabilities within ION and within the Infor portfolio when we start bringing non-sightline applications into the fold here. And Infor has the Infor, Infor Federated Security Model, IFS, and that works and sits on top of Active Directory and that provides a great level of highly secure uh, token passing, token management, uh, for keeping all of the data secure that is being passed between these uh, various applications. So uh, as you start looking and, and having the questions of, well, gee, if I implement uh, ION uh, on top of Sightline, is it still secure? And the answer is absolutely yes. And uh, Infor has taken this very, very seriously because as Infor starts moving more into a cloud uh, environment and using Amazon hosting, for example, uh, obviously cloud introduces many more security uh, questions that come up. And uh, so we've taken this very secure, the, the security model very, uh, very carefully here and uh, made sure that we're covering that. 
So uh, some things such as cross-application security, you know, obviously it's the use of things like HTTPS, making sure all those packets out on the wire can't be eavesdropped, and making sure that there's security uh, and encryption. Uh, single sign-on, being able to uh, utilize Active Directory, uh, so taking advantage of some of the Microsoft security capabilities. Of course, encryption. And I've said, mentioned that uh, you know we built this for the cloud environment. So for those that are running uh, in a uh, on-premise or a hosted environment, we'll also be able to take uh, take advantage of the security enhancements that Infor has made for the cloud environment. So with that, I'm going to turn this over to uh, my colleague Tom, and uh, take a look at. Uh, if you just bear with me here, I see Tom is uh, here. And I'm going to turn this over to Tom because Tom's going to cover and really amp this up a bit here. Uh, what Infor has done, uh, taking security really to the next level, taking compliance to the next level of things here. So, uh, Tom, with that, I'm going to turn this over to you. Yeah, that's me. So I'm a, a product director. So um, I'm responsible for the approval risk and compliance platform. And so today, I mean, you know, as we've been uh, talking about the last 20 minutes. What we really want to understand is what are the issues, what are the problems, what are some of the concerns that you have, you know, within your enterprise, within your individual organizations, and um, you know, as you know, as we've been talking about, Sightline has some great controls that are built in, um, but not all systems have that, and there's always room for improvement, you know, even with systems um, that have some of those internal controls whether it's in finance or whether it's in transaction processing. You know, there's like um, some type of um, concerns that you might have in terms of are there any fraudulent activities? Are there any uh, abusive activities going on? Whether it's uh, abuse that is purposeful or whether it's by mistake, right? Um, we're all human and humans make mistakes and uh, sometimes so uh, we don't understand what's going on within our system itself. So um, that's why uh, things such as Sarbanes-Oxley um, 404 was enacted, you know, back in the early uh, 2000, uh, 2002 period. Um, you know, certainly there's uh, individuals out there that are not as honest as all of us. And so there was uh, abuse going on, uh, which led to um, additional controls such as Office of Foreign Assets Control, OFAC, um, and you know, especially when you're in um, manufacturing and uh, whether it's in aerospace or you're dealing with uh, uh, other countries and exports, then there's things such as uh, ITAR, which is Traffic in Arms Regulations, and EAR, which is really the rules around you know exports. And so the list goes on and on. There's over 100 plus different regulatory controls that you need to worry about if you're running an organization, especially if you're uh, using a powerful um, back office application like Sightline. Can you go to the next slide? All right, All so right. Uh, just anec anecdotally, um, what we hear, what, you know, all of us, you know, you've probably heard some of your colleagues talk about this. Um, you know, you have an auditor that comes in, whether it's internal or an external auditing firm, uh, you know, we don't understand what's going on sometimes because there's lack of uh, controls built in, um, there's lack of reporting, and there's, uh, there's not collaboration amongst our colleagues internally. So uh, what we really want to do is really understand what are some of the concerns that you have, right? So maybe you have unauthorized purchases within procurement. Uh, maybe you have new regulations that are coming into play. Uh, your, uh, your suppliers or your customers are coming to you with, how do I address this particular uh, control? Whether it's a financial control, whether it's a transaction control, or whether it's maybe an export control. How do I deal with that? Go to the next slide. And um, there's been a lot of studies that have been done, you know, especially since uh, SOX was enacted, you know, um, more than a dozen years ago. And so, really, the, what are the drivers for, you know, improving continuous controls and monitoring those? Of course, it's fraud, and it's uh, it's preventing uh, abuse within 
the organization. Of course, it's mandatory with SOX 404. Um, and of course, it's internal policies that are set up. The policies are, are, are set up to drive better returns on investment for your investments you're making internally within your organizations. And of course, um, you know, across the board, uh, things such as, uh, you know, regulations um, that you need to worry about on your job, on your, it, <clears throat> you're manning, you're manning the, the ship right now, so you need to understand what those are and how to address those. Next slide. And this is a pulse report from Gatepoint Research. So I think you're starting to understand now what the problem is, what the issues are. And so you're not alone, meaning that, you know, this entire webinar is really meant to address, you know, what can you do, right? So obviously, um, you know, a lot of the response that Gatepoint had in their research study was really about we can't handle our internal controls anymore. There's just too many. Um, it's the, it, the, the number of, you know, segregation of duty um, access and authorization controls are daunting. So we need to take manual processes and automate them. And that was the biggest response. 66% basically said we need to eliminate that reliance on uh, just spreadsheets and manual workflow and uh, you know uh, compliance officers, compliance uh, staff that are doing this today. Next slide. All right, so I'm just going to go go through this. These are the challenges that we've been talking about: the increasing regulations, the lack of visibility, all right, uh, the lack of collaboration, because you're not alone. You have to work with different teams internally, with your audit teams, with your IT organizations, and across business units. And of course, there's continuing pressure to lower your costs. Next. So just ask yourself the question, what if you could? Go ahead, next. Uh, continually monitor for these risks and compliance. And of course, across the board, have a single platform that automatically manages these controls within your ERP systems and your back office applications. Next. And here, I'm really going to talk now about um, one of the solutions that Infor has is the Approva Risk and Compliance Platform. So it's a single, unified, uh, it's really a controls monitoring platform that brings that automation to your controls, your internal financial transaction and export controls. Of course, you can monitor multiple ERP applications. And so I've just listed a few here. Infor, LN, Sightline, Lawson, M3, Sun Systems, Bond, um, SAP, Oracle, Momentum, etc. The list goes on in terms of the number of uh, back office applications that Approva is today monitoring. And so we've got over 200 customers that um, are monitoring these internal controls in massive systems that you know are, are running um, Oracle and SAP and Lawson and M3 um, down to the middle tier where we're seeing a lot of Bond and Sightline and uh, some of the other systems uh, you know PeopleSoft um, of course without the rules without the internal control rule books and we'll get into some examples of that in a minute um, um, really you'd have to build this all yourself which is one of the things that you know having a platform like this brings uh, to the to your advantage next slide all right so at the at, at the top of the uh, of the pyramid here is we're really talking about access of users all right this is really about understanding how do you take care of segregation of duty controls and this is really users with authorizations to access certain tasks and transactions and reports within your back office applications. And so Approva brings access and authorization control monitoring to play here. So it continuously monitors your users, what sort of access they have, 
and this addresses the SOX 404 compliance, segregation of duties. It ensures that, you know, whenever you do an audit, you know exactly what your users are up to and what access they have and, of course, what they have been doing in their transactions. Next slide. All right, so this is a, just a brief example. What is it? Monitor segregation of duty is, a, is probably one of the key uses of this platform. Uh, it really monitors sensitive user areas within your applications and, of course, the access risk that that, pr that provides. And setting up security and authorizations is a daunting task for very uh, sophisticated ERP systems, meaning that you have to put into play auditing of that. You have to monitor that and for attestation for signing off on your audit reports, you need to have proof that you've done that. And that's what this platform does. It proves that you're doing everything possible to prevent segregation of duty violations and exceptions. And of course, the value is you're, you have um, <coughs> access and authorization um, control risks that are immediately detected and can be um, <coughs> Can, can be controlled and uh, mediated immediately. So, and of course, what are the results? Cost-effective segregation of duty, and of course, you can continually to govern that access to your sensitive areas. Next slide. And um, beyond that, Access Manager allows you to set up security provisioning, working with your ERP and your back office applications to ensure that um, even <clears throat> when you do see exceptions, when you do see violations, you can go back in and remediate that within those applications to change the security, to change the roles, and change the access and authorizations that those users have. Next slide. And of course, um, certifications mean that you know, once or twice a year, you have to go in and you have to ensure that the people, the users on your team, are set up properly. And that's a huge task that a lot of folks just do today with Excel spreadsheets. And uh, Approva provides a nice little uh, utility, a nice little interface for doing the certification and doing it quickly and easily and without any mistakes. Next. And beyond just the access and authorizations, um, you may want to then go ahead and implement process and transaction controls monitoring. So this is really, now that you, your users are being controlled, they may actually slip through and maybe your system is set up improperly to allow those users uh, to do things that they may not, they may, <coughs> they, they should not be doing and they may not be authorized to do even though uh, they've worked through the system somehow. Think of Eric Snowden and um, stealing passwords, user IDs and passwords from colleagues uh, within the federal government organizations that he worked with. And so that happens sometimes. So you can catch that by monitoring those transactions. So you can monitor the processes and you can look for errors. You can look for fraud and of course revenue leakage um, by things such as overpayments and duplicate payments. Next slide. And here's just an example of your process controls where you'd actually um, start to monitor throughout your procure-to-pay process in this case and looking for uh, <clears throat> purchase order quantity mismatches um, with invoice quantities. Um, goods receipt mismatches with uh, invoice quantities. Um, duplicate payments, split purchases. There's a number of different policies that you may have in place that you can set up within the rule book to monitor what's going on with those processes and the transactions that are driving them. Next slide. And we're also introducing um, to the approval platform and to the risk and compliance platform export compliance. This is really about um, global regulatory regimes such as ITAR, traffic in arms, 
um, EAR, which is the rules that control how you export and do business with other companies in other countries and looking at restricted party lists. Um, you may be wanting to ship something through um, your, your global shipper to uh, Iran, for example, and they have some, or Russia, and they have some uh, regulations in place today, uh, whether, whichever country you're dealing with, that prohibits shipments to particular parties or particular countries or particular uh, companies doing business with them. So this is how we're addressing that, and it's a service that is, a, is enabled for ERPs such as Sightline to go ahead and check shipments and check orders and look for um, restricted classified um, items within orders. So this is an exciting solution that we're that we're going to rele start releasing um, early in 2016. Next slide. All right, so we're going to just go through. These are just some. Uh, um, we don't have time today to, to do a demonstration of the Approva platform, but I'm just going to go through a couple of screenshots. Next slide. Uh, this is in a dashboard. So the dashboard really allows you to show what user access violations are occurring, and this is by status. So you can see a number of uh, different violations that users have been trying and have been set up inappropriate. Um, perhaps there's compensating controls for that, but that's okay. But you need to ensure that that's brought to a dashboard and analysis can be done by the appropriate compliance people. And of course, on the other side, it's process exceptions. These are the transactions that are being monitored. And contextual ins next, next slide. Uh, contextual insight. So not only do you see um, what's happening, the violations and exceptions, but you can drill right into the data that is within your ERP system, in this case within Sightline, to actually see, well, what exactly is causing that exception or that violation? Next. And not only do you have to see it and, you know, you need to analyze it and then manage it, right? So you have to remediate. You have to somehow collaborate with someone within an organization that maybe has set up those users' access and authorizations, that has set up the rules within the ERP system for procure to pay or order to cash or supply chain management. And this allows you to go ahead and set up cases and that, yes, I'm, I've got a violation. I'm going to address this. I'm going to assign it to someone on my team, my compliance team, to go ahead and investigate and then remediate the issue. Next slide. All right, keep going. One more. There you go. And compensating controls. Of course, um, you need to mitigate and establish compensating controls because in this case, uh, you see a case where um, you're able to go ahead and enter uh, a journal um, into a general ledger account. Um, and of course, you're able to create that account in the first place. So of course, you may, you may or should have access to do that, but an auditor may want to see a compensating control that says every time you do that, it's audited, and they can go back and check to make sure that uh, you, as entering journals, are doing the appropriate thing, and you're not um, covering anything up, or you're not making a mistake, and of course, hopefully uh, preventing any type of fraud and abuse from occurring. So that's really for auditing and ensuring that everything is covered and CY is in place for everyone. Next slide. And of course, the rule books. The rule books allow you to go ahead and build out um, the particular policies that you're using internally. And this would, um, I'd love to discuss this with each one of you on the, on the webinar today to see what sort of policies you have in place. And the rule books can be manipulated and customized for those particular policies that you're using internally. Next slide. Next. All right, so here's just uh, a logo slide for who's using Approva um, and for Approva customer profiles. Um, of course, segregation of duty is probably one of the main uses of Approva. 
Uh, and of course, uh, there's a number of customers that have taken that a step further. For example, Mattel here that's monitoring suspicious, erroneous general ledger transactions. It sounds pretty evil, doesn't it? Uh, but putting a, putting a platform like this in place uh, takes the evilness out of uh, back office applications and um, some of the things that can occur within them. Next slide. All right, so in summary, um, approval risk and compliance really automates you know, monitoring those internal controls. And it does two things. It tells you, can a user do certain things? I mean, can they access a transaction? Can they access a report? What can they actually do within the system? And you can uh, control that. And or did a user do? Did they actually uh, make a mistake? Did they um, approve a duplicate payment? Uh, could that be abuse of the system? Um, and this actually catches transactions and, and looks at processes and ensures that no errors are made and there's no cash leakage. And of course, there's no fraud and abuse that's occurring within your back office application. Next slide. And typical stakeholders, we already talked about this, you know, across your organization, audit, finance, and IT. Next. And here we see that there's some good benefits across the board for all stakeholders. Uh, you can have access to, to some of these slides. So, um, you know, whether you're in audit, whether you're in finance, or whether you're in IT, there's really some good benefits to automating monitoring of your internal controls within your ERP and back office applications. Next. So just a, a few takeaways for you. Uh, why is Approva unique and why is it valuable? Um, of course, it provides a comprehensive platform. Uh, it's fast and easy. It's rapid deployment because it's really integrated with your ERP systems, in particular with Infor. ERP systems, so it has out-of-the-box functionality and rule books that allow you to quickly deploy and implement this controls monitoring. And of course, as we just talked about, it, it gives value across your organization, and it's cost-effective. So um, just let us provide uh, an ROI study for you to allow how is it going to help you, um, you know, when you're going to um, tackle some of the issues, some of the problems that you have, whether it's segregation of duty, whether it's uh, whether it's uh, you know embracing better auditing, or whether it's just trying to figure out you know analyzing what type of exceptions and violations are occurring across your ERP and back office applications. Next. Very good. Right. Well, Tom, Tom, thank you very much. And uh, Joe, I'm going to turn it over to you for. Uh, Questions uh, from the audience here. Excellent. Thanks, Warren. Thanks, Tom. Uh, Warren, um, I believe this first question uh, is is perhaps more towards uh, the initial information about uh, uh, Sightline, but I'll let you handle it. Since Microsoft has dropped support for my operating system and database for Sightline 7, does this present a problem? Oh boy, I tell you what, that one's come up a number of times and uh, the answer is yes because uh, uh, typically what you're going to find is the audit the auditors are going to give you a real red flag on any time you have software in your organization that is not supported. And why is that an issue? Because Microsoft is no longer offering, uh, you know, let's say security patches. So really you have, uh, you know, you're kind of standing out there on your own at that point. And uh, I know we've been working with a number of our clients that uh, are running, for example, Sightline version 6, Sightline version 7, perhaps, and uh, to get them moved up and uh, make sure that their uh, environment, their version of Sightline uh, and, and their Microsoft environment uh, for server as well as the operating system are supported by Microsoft. So let's say moving up to uh, at least uh, 2008 R2. Uh, and uh, extremely important, though, because uh, customers that are staying behind uh, are really presenting themselves at risk because, you know, things have changed. You know, 2003, there wasn't the uh, the level of security perhaps needed. And, uh, you know, the, with the aggression uh, that we've seen 
on uh, on security. So absolutely gets to be a problem, and uh, I would say that is one of those hottest things that you could see out there is making sure that you're staying current. Excellent. Regarding site line integrations via SOAP and REST, do you support SSL? Yes. Yes, we do. Uh, as a matter of fact, that one has become uh, much more important because we're starting to get a lot of clients that uh, you know are asking about, for example, um, the ability of using REST uh, as an integration API methodology, and uh, we, of course, do support SSL. And uh, coming here in the uh, very near future, there'll be a lot of security uh, additions to that because that becomes even more important too. Uh, you know, as we move into the cloud environment, uh, even more heavily than we are today. So uh, stay tuned for a number of those things too. Excellent. Uh, a couple more. How does Approva integrate with ERP and back office applications? Oh, okay. Yeah. So really, in three ways and. Um, the first way is with a point-to-point -point adapter. So for some of, some of the, the uh, applications uh, like SAP or for Lawson, um, we, an Oracle and, and, and some of the other um, more traditional um, ERP applications, there's point-to-point -point adapters. Um, that's good, and, but adapters can pose um, some maintenance issues. Of course, you have to continually update the adapters every time the ERP changes. Uh, one of the um, methods that Infor is now supporting for integrating with Infor applications is ION. And ION is the service bus that um, passes back standardized XML documents that allow easy out-of-the-box integration with the Infor ERP applications. And that's really how uh, we're, we're supporting uh, in for LN and M3 and Sightline and, and Bond and so on and so forth. So it uh, depends on the release level, um, but if your release level isn't covered today, um, you know, there's, uh, there's a possibility that we can support the security bods and the process and transaction bods um, pretty easily uh, with, with, a, with a quick um, new delivery patch. And of course the third way is just custom. If you have a legacy application, that um, needs custom integration. We have utilities that allow you to extract the data directly from those um, systems that aren't supported either with ION or with a point-to-point -point adapter. Good question, though. Next time, one more uh, for you. Uh, regarding internal control rule books with Approva, are those able to be customized? Yeah, so we deliver um, a tool called the Studio uh, which allows you to actually build out um, the um, custom rules and then it allows you with a web interface to actually modify those rules as your policies change internally. So we know that everyone you know needs to ensure that you know when when you're when a vendor is created you can't go ahead and have that same person that created that vendor go ahead and, and change their for, for example their bank account information um, but you can create a custom mitigating controls by adding a policy on top of that rule. So we deliver out of the box rules that you can actually add and change policies for those rules with this tool. So it's, uh, it's pretty customizable, but uh, again, it's a web interface that allows you to do that change. And of course, it's all controlled uh, through configuration management. Excellent. That concludes uh, the questions, Tom. Warren, thank you guys so much for the presentation. Uh, and for our audience folks, again, we uh, really appreciate you taking time away from your busy day to spend time with us here. Uh, if you'd like further information or have additional questions, please send those to us at this email address, info, I-N-F-O, at godlin.com. We'd be very happy to follow up with you. With that, thanks for joining us, and I hope everyone has a great day.